Good day, Ebic Church family. I hope that you're doing well and staying healthy. Uh, I hope you're in the swing of things this summer and that in this new green phase of our county's reopening that you're enjoying the loosened restrictions, but that you're also staying safe and healthy and taking the necessary precautions, whatever you're doing. Uh, I am happy to talk with you today uh, about what it is going to look like as we come back together again. We are now less than two weeks away from July 12th, which is our designated Sunday, uh, comeback Sunday, uh, for those who uh, are ready and willing to come back for worship. Uh, and I've told you in past weeks that things are going to look a little bit different, so I wanted to be able to talk with you a little bit about how they're going to look different. Uh, and actually, in, in this video, I'm going to talk less about the details of how uh, and I want to talk more about the why. why. Why are we doing some of the things that we're doing and having some of the restrictions that we're having uh, and try to explain that. And there will be a separate document. You'll find it on our website. We'll also make it available to you uh, that will talk a little bit more about the, the, the ins and outs of our particular plan. But um, let me just, in summary, talk about what our Comeback Sunday plan looks like. Uh, first of all, there is going to be registration ahead of time, so uh, we need to know who is coming and how many are coming so that we can keep people adequately spaced in the building. So uh, there will be online registration. If you don't have internet, then you'll be able to call the office and you can register that way uh, prior to attending. Uh, there will also be the expectation that people are wearing masks when they're in the building uh, while they're here for services. Uh, and that'll apply to uh, anyone who is over two, uh, except for a couple things, if you have medical exceptions, of course, and also the worship team, while they're on the platform leading, they will not be wearing masks, but when they come down from uh, doing their service on the platform, uh, they'll put their masks on. So uh, there will be that expectation for you while you're here for services. Uh, there will be limited entrances and exits. Uh, you'll come in the front door and then we'll guide you to the proper exits after the service. Uh, so that'll be a little different. We are having uh, separate gathering spaces in the sanctuary and in the gym. Uh, and so we'll have those two rooms open so that we can, again, space people out a little bit more. Uh, there will be cleaning after each service, and then there will be orderly dismissal. So it, it won't just be a free-for-all at the end of the service. We'll dismiss people by rows. Uh, it'll feel kind of like you're at a wedding. Uh, you'll be dismissed by rows, and then we'll encourage people to go outside and do their visiting outside so the building can be cleaned. So uh, those are just a few nutshell kinds of things related to our plan for bringing people back. Uh, let me just say all of those plans that I've just mentioned are subject to change based on what's going on around us. So if, um, if government um, and public health officials change their expectations for us, uh, if uh, what we hope happens is as the, the COVID-19 infections uh, go down, as the rate decreases, we hope that we'll be able to loosen up restrictions pretty quickly. Uh, so from week to week, we may be able to make some changes, and, and certainly we're just going to need to tweak things as we see how things work. But uh, until we know that, this is our plan. Uh, when we make changes in weeks to come, we'll try to let you know in advance so that you will always know what to expect when you come. Uh, something that I am planning to do next week is uh, I hope that next week uh, for this video update, I can do kind of a walk through our building so that you can see a little bit of what will happen, what things will look like, and what you can expect if you choose to come on July 12th. So uh, you can anticipate that video next week. In the meantime, like I said, there will be, uh, there will be information on our website and uh, that'll summarize what, uh, what our expectations are for people as they're coming. So as you weigh the particulars, you'll have to make decisions about how soon you want to return. Uh, just because we are regathering again and opening the building for services again does not mean that you need to rush back. We're going to continue to do our live stream services. So you can continue to participate that way. And some of you, many of you, uh, probably should continue to, to participate that way rather than uh, rushing to come back. Uh, we're going to do all that we can to, to make the environment safe, but just know that there will still be risk of infection uh, from being in a large space with uh, a number of people. Uh, and so we'll do what we can to minimize the risk, and you need to be uh, wise in uh, deciding when is the right time for you to return to worship. Uh, particularly if you're, uh, if you're ill or if you're vulnerable to infection, uh, then you're going to want to push that out uh, sometime until you would return. So that's a little bit of the what. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the, the underlying thought behind some of these guidelines. 
Uh, as with the announcement of our initial five-step uh, comeback plan that I made a few weeks ago, um, I recognize and I expect that some of the measures we're talking about are going to be disappointing to some of you. Uh, you may know of other churches that seem less restrictive uh, in comparison to what I've just described and what you're going to read about our reopening guidelines. Uh, can I just encourage you to avoid those kind of comparisons as much as you can? Uh, maybe you've experienced this in your life, but but often when, when we compare ourselves to other people, uh, that can be really harmful to us and detrimental to our mental and emotional health uh, because often what we do when we when we compare ourselves to others is our tendency is uh, to look at other people who have something that we want or who excel in something that that we wish we were better at and uh, so you know we're putting ourselves down in comparison to them and the other thing is we usually compare ourselves with other people without seeing their full experience so we're looking at just a part of their life and are comparing it to our whole life and we find ourselves lacking uh, that tendency and the way we tend to compare ourselves i think is something that that's very easy to do when we're talking about churches as well um, when you compare in particular here our comeback sunday plan with that of another church. Um, it's easy to, to you know, see the good parts of someone else's plan and to see the parts you don't like about our plan. Uh, and so let me encourage you that, that that kind of comparison probably isn't helpful because our congregation is made up of unique people with unique demographics and perspectives and experiences. And so it's difficult to just on the surface uh, compare two churches and make an apples to apples comparison. Uh, I assure you our leaders have tried to make the best decisions we can given the resources that are available to us. Um, you know, here's the reality, as you've no doubt heard endlessly, these are unprecedented times. Uh, none of us has experienced exactly what we're experiencing right now in living memory, and so we are doing the best that we can. Uh, every church is doing the best that it can to contextualize the information that they're getting and then prayerfully discerning the wisest course of action for their particular community. Um, and so I don't think it's necessarily uh, helpful for me to criticize another congregation who's doing it differently than we are, um, and I would encourage you not to criticize another congregation or our congregation or any church for how they're wrestling through uh, these issues. Rather, I'd encourage you to pray. Uh, pray for these churches. Pray for these church leaders, for every congregation that has to wrestle through the reams of data and the widely divergent opinions in their church bodies in order to try to make wise decisions. Um, pray, pray for all of us who have to make those kinds of calls. Uh, and pray for the type of unity amidst diversity that Jesus prayed for. Uh, you know, something that Jesus prayed for is probably something that would be good for us to pray for too. And one of his most earnest prayers the night before he died uh, was for the unity of the church. And he prayed that, that our love for each other would be evident to the world. And so pray that the love that we have for each other would be evident in our attitudes and our actions and that the love we have would supersede our differing opinions and preferences, in particular the way uh, it manifests itself in these questions of how we reopen church services. Um, so that, that's an encouragement I have for you. Uh, the point of our comeback plan that will probably be the least popular, I expect, uh, is what I just shared a bit ago about wearing masks. Uh, so I want to comment specifically on that. Um, first of all, just a, an observation. It is disheartening to me the way that even mask wearing during a pandemic um, can become a political issue in our divided society. Uh, so you have some people who prefer not to wear masks, viewing those who are in favor of mask wearing uh, as people who are living in fear or they're just bowing to government overreach. Uh, and then there are others who see mask wearing as essential that can view those who don't as unloving or unscientific. And so uh, then we're, you know, judging each other and we're, you know, polarizing even more. Can I just suggest that we start with the premise that, uh, that everyone has reasons for their opinion? Uh, and those reasons, even if we disagreed with them, would make more sense to us if we would stop the criticism and we would listen and we would seek to understand. Uh, so without casting judgment on anyone's motives for feeling like we should wear masks or we shouldn't wear masks, we're simply 
Uh, we're simply asking that when you come for worship here, uh, at least for the time being, that you wear masks while you're in the building. Uh, and we will be you know, delighted to announce uh, when we can change that expectation. Uh, our reasons for asking people to wear masks are several. First of all, there is the, the order that actually was just given yesterday as I record this uh, by the Pennsylvania Governor and Secretary of Health mandating that people in uh, public indoor spaces wear masks. Uh, and so because they've given those orders, uh, we as Christians have uh, responsibilities to submit ourselves to the governing authorities. In Romans 13, Paul says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. Uh, and he goes on and he says, the one in authority is God's servant. It's actually God's servant for your good. Uh, and so uh, the, the governor and the secretary of health, I think, have our good in mind. We may disagree with them, but... Uh, I think we as Christians uh, don't have to like what they're saying um, in order to, to submit to the governing authorities that are over us. Uh, but, you know, even beyond that particular order that you may or may not think is wise, uh, when you consider the, the overall uh, consensus among healthcare professionals, so uh, the CDC, um, the, uh, the U.S. Surgeon General, uh, local health professionals, even doctors in our own congregation, the consensus that I've heard and read uh, again and again is that mask wearing has value. Uh, and so certainly not everyone agrees with that, but the, the overwhelming majority of people that I've heard from and seen uh, in the medical field have said that mask wearing is valuable. Uh, just the other day, I read an article from Penn State Hershey Medical Center, and the title was Don't Get Lax With the Mask. Uh, and the CDC website, in an article updated just on June 28th, had this to say about masks. It said, a cloth face covering may not protect the wearer, but it may keep the wearer from spreading the virus to others. Cloth face coverings are most likely to reduce the spread of COVID-19 when they are widely used by people in public settings. Uh, and so as some places in our nation see a surge in the number of COVID cases, uh, it seems prudent to heed the counsel of the medical professionals. Uh, and so that's what we're, uh, we're, we're going to do as we gather for services at EBIC. Um, alongside the medical recommendations related to masks specifically, but even just other guidelines that you may disagree with, uh, let me suggest to you that regardless of your personal opinion about this guideline or that requirement or that expectation, uh, that following them is one small way to do what Paul talks about in Philippians 2. Uh, he says there, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Uh, Jesus modeled that kind of attitude and that kind of servanthood for his disciples. Uh, and in John 13, Jesus washed his disciples' feet, which was meeting a very practical need for them. They walked most places that they went. Uh, they would have likely been wearing sandals, and so uh, they're walking on dusty roads, and so their feet are dirty when they arrive at their their destination. And so uh, it was always a question, uh, who does the foot washing? That's servant's work. Well, on this one particular occasion, Jesus did the foot washing for them. Uh, and sometimes Christians today in the 21st century will talk about what does first century feet washing look like today? Uh, well, let me just suggest to you, maybe, maybe, Foot washing today looks like wearing a mask. Uh, it looks like respecting uh, social distancing. Uh, it, it looks like doing those things that, that are small and tangible, but uncomfortable uh, to serve and contribute to the well-being of others. So uh, my encouragement to you is, is let's, you know, let's do this. Uh, let's take care of each other. Let's look out for each other. Uh, let's honor each other. Uh, as more valuable than ourselves, and uh, do these things for the health of the other. Uh, let me assure you, we as staff feel the way many of you do. We are, we're, we're sad uh, to be in this spot where something we used to take for granted, being able to gather for worship, suddenly is so complicated and restrictive. Um, at the same time, we recognize that we can't stay in lockdown forever. I mean, we, for our mental and emotional and spiritual health, we need to be able to meet together again. And so we are willing to do what it takes uh, and what is necessary for that to happen. I fully expect that the guidelines that we've put in place uh, for you know, these upcoming Sundays 
that are just for a season. We'll get through that season and we'll be able to, to hopefully before too many weeks or months go by, be able to get back to something that feels a little more normal. Uh, but in the meantime, I have great confidence in our resilience as a church and in our ability to sacrifice our comforts and our preferences as expressions of the love we have for each other. Uh, and where I want to end today uh, is just with these encouraging words from Paul. This is from Philippians 4. And I hope that we can take these to heart and live them out. He writes, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. May we all experience his strength uh, to do what we can to continue to love each other well. Uh, much grace to you as you go through the rest of your week. Uh, looking forward to seeing many of you again, hopefully before too long. God bless.